stencils are just a really really good way of creating something with um, ease it's not like it's without effort it's still of course with effort it just takes away a certain element of time I guess so it what I find with stencils is that they open me up to other ideas because I haven't taken so long to sketch something in the first place so I can play with other ideas <laughs> so I'm going to use a stencil this whole video is taken from a live stream that I did into my Facebook group and the stencils that I'm going to be using are all from my collaboration with creative expressions so I have a whole collection of different stencils so I've decided which journal I'm going to use and that's a, an altered book that's part of other videos and I've mainly used joyful gesso which is my ultra ultra matte acrylic paint and I'm just flipping through the various stencils to decide which one I'm going to use I'm going to use the layer cake paint in the sushi roll palette to uh, pounce a sponge through the stencil you can draw through them with a pencil or with colored pencil you can spray through them with ink um, sometimes I like to use a sponge and pounce through with stamping ink all of these ways are relevant why I like using the layer cake paint which is it's of the ease of watercolor pans which I love it's the opacity of gouache which I love and that creaminess and the layerability of acrylic and the sort of velvety matte finish of a pastel an artist pastel so it's a, a wonderful hybrid creature <laughs> that I've created I'm also using a skinny mini brush now this brush obviously the form of it is very familiar toothbrush it just gives you extra control having that horizontal format for this type of uh, work and if you've done acrylics or paint through a stencil you know that that can be a little bit tricky it tends to creep under it the trick is not to have too much water so that the, the paint is kind of stiff or very very creamy and that's what I had with my layer cakes uh, I didn't have too much water in the brush and then I'm able to get a fairly good result the reason I've used something that's water soluble is so that if I want to remove part of it or remove all of it or alter things as I go I'm giving myself the greatest latitude for that uh, because it's water soluble on top of the acrylic which isn't going to isn't going anywhere which is very firmly attached to the paper if I add water to this layer cake I can erase it completely so it just gives you that again the ease to not sweat that stuff and think about other things like building up your skills in uh, like contouring the face and adding volume so I'm starting this one with a very very flat layer of the color called tempura vegetables so each of the sushi roll palette has two tones I've got lots of palettes in the collection that are like that so you've got multiple colors that go together and the whole palette itself has a, a flow and are all colors that are selected to work together to make it again it's that ease thing just make things just get you right footed when I say you I mean me <laughs> I'm adding in a beautiful color called Tobacco and Row. So technically Tobacco is the top part and Row is the bottom part. And I'm adding some of the shrimp and prawn, which is a warm pink, like a coral pink, and some of the pickled ginger into the cheeks. Uh, I love mixing warm and cool of any color. It just, they're in the same family, but it's opposite ends of a very, very short spectrum. And I think it just adds extra variety and it's fun I'm using a uh, pavlova which is a color from the ice cream slice palette there's six layer cake palettes of the big size there's two mini palettes and now there are also the color wheels which are a little colorful craving so we have mini bites <laughs> bite size layer cake palettes the big ones and the new color wheels which are like little stories of paint 
it's just, I, I just think it's, it's one of my favourite things to create with. Because look at the colour. <laughs> this is a macaroon. It's the colour, yes, on its own, glorious. But the colour with that pink background, mm, and because it's that ultra matte paint, mm, extra. Mm. <laughs> and the reason that blue is just to my eyes, I can only speak about my eyes. To you, this may be hideous, and that's fine. <laughs> to me, this is deliciousness on a stick. Because I've got the uh, little bit of blue paint down the bottom, which is, I think, through a stencil, might be through some lace, and I think it might be layer cake, actually. I may have been experimenting by pouncing layer cake through actual stencil. Oh, sorry, through actual lace as a stencil and that's what that colour is down the bottom. So now that we've got another blue and that blue in the eyes, I love that kind of cool pink and the beautiful turquoises together. But, and then a lilac, I'm just using all my favourite colours. And But we've got like a little story of colour that's lifting up through the page and then because we've got a little bit of that blue on the other side which I think I was playing around with some of the Japanese uh, lace silk screens that I have uh, to me it just helps very disparate things start to come together and then I'm just looking at the background image is that a story about a Viking <laughs> maybe this is uh, Brunhilde or a um, a Viking warrior maiden, shield maiden, who knows. This is the thing that I love about <laughs> creating without a plan and art journaling, mixed media, because I'm absolutely free to let whatever evolves, evolve. And sometimes the story manifests itself as I create. So I've used that lilac to in the shadow areas, dark areas of the face to say here is, uh, this is where the paper goes back. And I'm using the lighter color, the white, to say this is where the form of my subject is coming forward. This is where the light is hitting her. After blocking in the skin tone that I'm using and just the basic colors to get an idea of what I'm going to create, that's a good time to walk away and let things dry off completely. It, and it doesn't really matter what media you're using. Uh, it's just getting in your basics. So you've got a, you feel like you have a handle on what you're creating. Awesome. For me, that's a good spot to go and have a cup of tea, walk the dogs, go and do something else. Let everything dry off so that my next layers can be a little clearer as I'm starting to add detail, which is what I'm doing. Now, I'm not adding detail in my darkest color which is black I'm adding it in uh, freshwater eel and uh, sea urchin which are colors in this particular palette but they're dark blues um, cool 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 dark grays uh, I love using indigos and or even really deep greens deep purples to add depth I can always come along and add my darkest dark black to the very darkest parts of the face, which are the lash line, a little bit in the nostrils, if you want to do really dark eyebrows, but, and the pupils of the eyes. They're going to be the darkest areas uh, with normal lighting. Of course, you can get as creative as you like. Now, I'm adding another round of highlights not with my lightest light, which is white, <laughs> but with a creamy mix of genoise and some of the tempura vegetables and a little bit of the dipping part of dipping sauce. I'm, I'm making little mixtures. I'm using the top of those egg cake palettes as a little mixing tray. So that I've got a, a secondary highlight. And word of warning, this part of the art where you've it's usually where it starts to get oh, can start to look a little bit ugly <laughs> because you've done the initial layers and you've sort of so happy you're on a roll 
and then you um, add your highlights and your darkest darks. And again, I'm just talking about myself and I think, wow, you know, because that always makes things pop. And then I think, okay, well, I want to keep working on this. And I start to go into adding more volume, adding <laughs> more graduated lights and more graduated darks. And that's where things, again, start to get a little bit, uh, oop, look a little bit rough because it's not finished. You're taking the work into its next phase and its next little realm. And this is where you're working out all of the other challenges. And this is why stencils or stamps or tracing older work that, of your own that you've already got can be fabulous because it accelerates you into this phase a little bit quicker and you're less precious about what you're doing because it hasn't taken you so long to get there. So they're really, really valuable skill building tools. So now that I've added that extra set of highlights and lowlights, and I've got a little bit of volume happening on that face, what I often do is just give my eyes a break and just work on another element. So work on the background, work on accessories or something else that is in the on the page so that I can just take a little just a short little detour away from what I've been working on just freshens up the eyes again I'm going to use the skinny mini brush not much water in it this is the trick with the stencils unless you want to get that running under the stencil effect which can look very lovely and watercolory fabulous but I want to try and get it a little bit cleaner and I love doing this because not only can I just stamp that nice lovely creamy paint through my stencil I can also just change colors just bim bom boom it doesn't contaminate the colors within the pan because you just lift them back off again but I can get just a nice variety of colors so that now I've got like something fancy happening in her hair with her little whatever that is we haven't decided yet it's looking to me like it's some sort of fancy flower some sort of fancy little tiny hat and a fancy fancy collar so I think it's uh, a little bit Victorian era fanciness <laughs> now I'm using completely different color I'm using the orange to help lift my subject this lady just from this really bright and vivid background so that She's got her own space on the page without going into dark colors, which I can always move up to. But if I start with the lighter or the brighter colors, even this can give a nice undertone if I intend to take things to a much darker background or lighter background, something to cut her out essentially from what's happening behind her. But I love the fact that she's kind of matching the background like as if this is someone who has decided to completely either change their house so that it matches them or vice versa so we have a bit of a Marie Antoinette extravagance happening and I'm using the ladybug dotter in orange pumpkin to add some connection to the other side of the page in the background so I've got that orange and I've used the same ladybug dot so it's got a dye based ink inside that they're very very handy and then using them in sprinkle of dots of them to connect her to the background a little bit more so it's not just this sudden introduction of orange and for my highlights and again just trying to cut her out from the background make her sit forward against this very bright background very bright thrilling pink I'm using marzipan twist in the white and this is a water soluble crayon uh, it's got a lovely rough look crayons always do because of the way they work on the paper so it's got a very I think a painterly artistic look I could also use the white paint pen but that has a more crisp clean cut look and there's nothing much that's crisp and clean cut about <laughs> my lady here uh, she is she's painterly expressive and artistic herself everything that I've shown you in this video 
from the Joyful Gesso to the Marzipan Twists, the Ladybug Dotters, the Stencils, the Layer Cakes are all available at janedavenport.com. You can also join my Facebook group if you've got some of my art supplies and you want to show and share some of the artwork that you've been creating with it. It's such a lovely group and we all love to see what everyone has been creating and it's irrelevant where you are on your creation journey if you've just started and you're just learning about art supplies and what it is that you like and what it is you like to draw or whether or if you've been doing this forever and ever and you know exactly what it is that you're creating just as long as you are creating and it's making you a happier person that's all I want for you.